Tonight on Tabitha Takes Over. John Garcia and Larry Hebert have owned Club Ripples since 1974. <laughs> My partner Larry and I have owned Ripples for 38 years. I can't be your daddy. Well, yes, I can. Ripples is the oldest gay bar in Long Beach. Oh. I've been coming in here 35 years. Whenever I tell someone I work at Ripples, the first response is, oh my god, that place used to be so much fun. The glory days, the line would wrap around the building. And now we are fighting to get anybody through the door. You would think these f***ing kids would come in here. Shut up, you whore. Where's the ashtray here? Well, somebody better pick that up. But their bad business practices have ruined the club's reputation. You know where it goes. Go if you put that back there. And driven away their loyal customers. Do you come here often? <laughs> No, never. And now, Long Beach's first gay dance club is in danger of closing. Nobody's here, as usual. John and Larry, I feel like they just need to connect with us and the customers more than they do. I have not gotten any response. John is usually in his office. What's going on over there? Larry loves to watch on the video cameras from home. What's Nicole drinking? Nicole, what are you drinking? Water. It's like Big Brother. Larry said don't stand around with your hands in your pockets. John and Larry are like Jekyll and Hyde. You like to work, I like to go to the beach. Yeah. Where's all the people with money? Financially, the bar is just barely making it. Tabitha, we are an institution here in Long Beach that desperately needs help. We could lose everything. We could lose the bar, we could lose our home. The whole place could close down. Where are they? Where's everybody? Right I'm Tabitha, I'm tough, I'm talented, I'm taking over. Okay, go. Go get it. Good afternoon, Ripples. Who am I speaking to? This is John. Who is this? This is Tabitha. I would like you to get Larry, get your keys, and come outside and meet me. Well, let's go outside. Who's that? Tabitha. Tabitha's here? Come on. Oh, <laughs> I gotta go, Poody. I've had cameras in Club Ripples all day. And now I'm going to sit down with the owners, John and Larry, and show them what I saw. Come on, gentlemen. Can I have a hug? No, I don't can I hug. Can I have a shake? You can have a shake. Well, when you get to know me, you'll give me a kiss at the end. Really? I'm Italian, we kiss. I'm Australian, we don't. <laughs> OK. So you asked my help? Yes. And be... here I am. Are I you ready to come with me? Yes, I had a All feeling. Right, come on. I couldn't believe it when I turned around and John had broken down in tears. Why are you crying? <sighs> You're like wound up. Is anything? I am. Lots of stress. Lots of stress? I need my business to turn around, you know. Right. Well, I don't hug, so you two have a hug and we'll get out of here and see what we can do <laughs> about the situation. Tell me why you need my help. We've tried just about everything, and we don't know what we're doing wrong. It's just too overwhelming. We've and been at it for so long that I can't see the forest for the trees. How long have you owned Ripples? Since 74. That's extraordinary. Ripples was the first gay dance club. We had a line going around the corner. In the old days, we weren't accepted like we are now. It was scary back then, but we were always busy because that's where they felt comfortable to go. It was a safe haven for the gays. So it's been a gay institution for a very long time. So why do you feel like you're not busy now? People don't go out like they used to. I'm really sorry, that's bullshit. People love to go out. Okay. I go out, I go to a bar in North Hollywood because I'm older and Saturday night's disco night. And that's me. On disco night? Yeah. So tell me about your competition. I don't like my competition. Why not? Steal my management, they steal my employees, our Art. themes, everything. So do you think that's just I think you know, part this, of being in the bar in this business? In day and age, in this economy, I think so. Well, let me ask you this. Do your staff go to other bars? Yes. Sure they do. They get the hookup. Well, what's the hookup? You give me free drinks, and I'll give you free drinks at my bar. Do your staff yeah. give free drinks? I catch them, I'll fire them. Are your staff scared of you? They're scared of me. Okay, not so they're me. scared of you, John. They're not scared they're of They're not him. scared of you, No, because I'll yell and get it out and I'm over with. But he holds it in. They can't read him like they can read me. Do you have passion for your business? Do you love it? Oh, yes. I have the passion, but not as intense as his. That's his baby. Oh, because you have the health problems too. You know, yeah. I'm healthy as a horse. 
What kind of health problems, Larry? I've had quintuple bypass uh, uh -huh. 12 years ago. It's been real hard. Larry, you're at home more often, and John, you're in the bar. Is that how it works? Yeah, I'm in my office. John goes to work in the morning and is there all day, and I come later. I usually stay in on Friday night. I sleep in my office with my dog. I bought him a futon. I mean, you two are obviously a very old married couple, and I don't mean that disrespectfully. Going on 38 years. 38, 38 years. years. I met him my first night out to a gay bar. And was it love at first sight? Uh, for him, it was. For me, I didn't know what I was doing. I was 22 years old, wet behind the ears. I think he took advantage of me. Really? John has something to say. I did take advantage of him. <laughs> <laughs> Just fell head over heels for him. He saw me dancing. Wow. <laughs> so um, you obviously, because of your condition, can't have undue stress, which is why you're at home more. And that's why more. I keep a lot of that to myself because I don't want him to be stressed out more. John, tell me where you're at financially. Tell me about the bills. I think my bank account is overdrawn by about fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000. Wow. His credit cards are maxed out. Mine are maxed out. So how much money so, do you think you're losing a month? Between thirty and 40000 Holy hell. That's a lot of friggin' money. If we don't start making money now, by the next summer, we're going to be broke. Has it changed the way you treat your employees and your customers because times are tough? It's very hard to be happy and go lucky and carefree when you're not doing well. So you're ready to take a look at what happened today? At your Sunday afternoon tea okay. dance? Yes. OK, let's look. Hey, hi. Going? Sorry, I don't want to be like, rude, but can I get my couple back? Uh, you'd have to check with the doorman. We got a customer up front who wants his money back. Well, there's nothing I can do. So that client paid $7 to come in, and he said, the bar is too empty. I don't want to stay. It happens. Do you think that your bar and the experience today was worth $7? No. I wouldn't stay. Who's there? On an average night, how many people do you think come through your doors? Nothing. 20, 20, 20 30 people. Yeah, if you're lucky. That's today, brutal. It doesn't pay the, the electricity. Why mm -hmm. aren't people coming in anymore? Because they obviously used to come in. I don't know. Well, let's take a look at this. Thank you for calling Club Rebels. This is Brandon. How can I help you? Listen, you see that guy sitting at the bar? What's that next to him? Is that a backpack? Yeah. Take it off the bar, please. I'm sitting in my big chair at home. I'm watching my cameras. So you called the bar? I don't like bags on the bar. So why is that? I'm just from the old school. You don't put things all over the bar. Also, I don't like drinks on the dance floor. We don't allow that. But here's the thing. They've just spent money on a drink, then it'll get thrown away, and it's gone. People don't want to leave their drinks behind. I know. And John, you're clearly the quieter one. And you said that you, you know, stay in your office. Do you enjoy, you know, socializing with the customers and coming out? It's more uncomfortable now. Our Everybody nice. tries to be your friend and wants you to buy them drinks and stuff. All right, well, let's take a look at this. You sure I can't get a glass of water? Positive. Got a couple rounds. Already. No tap water at all. I just have to sell you the bottle. So. You? Yeah. It's um, just water. Trust me, I hear you. We don't give water away. Why not? Because water is free, it comes out of a tap. No, we give it to them in a bottle. But if someone asks for tap water, what happens? I don't give it to them. Why? I'm not in the business to give you water. You're in the business to come in my bar and have a drink. Here's the thing. Some people like to have a drink and a water, and they like to pace themselves with both, which means that they'll actually stay longer and drink more and spend more. That isn't cheap water that we buy. It's cheap from, water. It's from Iceland. Ooh, no, it's expensive. It's not like you're... Iceland. Well, it's good Fancy water. Fancy water. It is. It's very good water. Listen, you've lost your mind and you're going to lose your bar okay. with that mentality because you're actually missing the point. I have no problem with you charging for a bottle of water, but people should be allowed to get a glass of tap water that really costs you nothing. Nothing. All right, well, let's take a look at this. Could have just asked for a glass of ice. <laughs> Gone to the bathroom. <laughs> Out of the tap. Fine, done. Check. So, I mean, they're sitting there openly mocking the bar. What do you think he thought after that experience? Well, he wouldn't come back. Do you think any of his friends would come back? Probably not. And tell me, what's the deal with the plastic cups? My employees couldn't keep up with washing glasses and forever breaking. I think it looks really tacky. And you know what? I think drinks taste awful in plastic glasses. It's more expensive to use the glasses than the plastic. I have to tell you, you guys have an excuse for everything. 
You do. And you know what? Everything needs to change to save this gay landmark and your gay asses. Because <laughs> it's pretty dire. It's, so it's scary. So give me your keys because I'm taking over. I don't have them. I left them at work. They oh have them. my God. They have them. I don't I have I said any get the keys. Nobody told me. I told John. Oh, me? You know what? I'll f***ing climb in the window. <laughs> I'll scale the patio wall in these heels. I'll give Come you on, a boost. you two. <laughs> Hello. Hello, everyone. <gasps> Gather around, everyone. Gather around. <gasps> Come around here, please. Tabitha's one badass bitch, and she's going to f the sh out of John and Larry, and I can't wait. I'm Tabitha, and I'm taking over. I'm closing this place down for the week, and in that week, everything will change because you will play by my rules. I would have sent customers home, but there aren't any in here. Embarrassing. Why? You want to be proud of where you work, and you can be proud when it's successful, and obviously we're not able to be proud of the success right now. It's a ghost town in here quite a lot of the time. Yes. Yeah? Yes. Well, someone needs to turn on the house lights so that I can look around. better in the dark, really, isn't it? Thank God the club is dark most of the time. It looks like a 70s prom that should never have happened. What's in here? The office. OK, so this is where you sit and watch. Here are your cameras. Yes. OK. Seeing as you didn't have your key when I asked for it, could I please have it now? Thank you very much. All right, come on. Suggestions, comments, and it's filthy. There's like dust all over it, so clearly no one's actually getting the suggestions. We don't have a key. That hasn't been checked in, in years. Home job. Home job? Yeah, covered. And wobbly. It's like going for a ride. There's a few like that. Famous Here's water. Here's the famous water Iceland. from Iceland. All the staff are laughing at me. I'll give you 350 for it. <laughs> I will. Here you go. So let's yeah. go outside. This is our patio. Yeah. Look at this. It's absolutely tragic. And then all these frigging horrible lays and hats everywhere. This place is not only stuck in a time warp, it's really tacky. Tomorrow, I want to hear from the staff. Absolutely. Coming up, someone comes in with a handbag and they sit it on the bar. I want the bar to look nice. I don't want it to look like a coat room. John and Larry gave me an earful yesterday, and now I want to get the staff's opinion on their ridiculous rules. Tell me what Larry and John are like as owners. John is the day-to-day -day guy. He doesn't smile. There's no affection. Better pray that you don't have to wake him up. It's like waking up a monster. It's waking up a sleeping monster. He is like, well, I'm taking a nap. Like, he'll yell at you or whatever. John can't be scary. If John's in a bad mood, don't bother him. Get the hell out of there. Larry has a personality, yeah. but he's a little over obtrusive. He loves to watch us from home and call us over trivial things or things that he thinks he sees on the camera. How many times a day does Larry call from home? A five, five to ten, ten at least, a minimum. Probably. And it's calling about things like purses on the bar, because that, oh. I have to tell you, is the most ridiculous f***ing thing I've ever heard. Thank oh, you. Oh, we feel like we drive people away for stupid reasons. Larry really has some very archaic rules. Yes. Mm -hmm. There's no drinks on the dance floor. The hands in the pocket means that you're stealing. I'm sorry? It means that you're a thief. <laughs> wow, I've never heard that yes, one before. They kind of view this place as their clubhouse, and if you don't like their rules, you can climb down the tree and go home. Do they not understand that all the things that they're doing, it's actually costing them business? Absolutely. <laughs> What do you think the standing of this place in the community is? If you read the reviews online, it's like all negatives. They're very greedy. That's the stigma, I think, around town. Tell me about why they have that stigma of being greedy. Cover charge. It's expensive. So tell me about when the heyday of this place was. 1970, 1980s. <laughs> That's a long time ago. You used to come in here, and it was wall to wall. Hot men. It was just fun walking through. There was a wonderful energy. It was right on the beach. It was a blast. And they're trying to run things the same way that they did then, and that doesn't really work now. 
Let's get some young blood in here and let's make it happen. There's no reason why it shouldn't be packed in here. They've been in this business for a long time. They're set in their ways. Larry wants to always do like disco parties and stuff and we feel like it's dated. We'll try it and then it'll fail. It'll be our fault. Yeah. It's your fault. There's daily blame placed on all of us. It's negative all the time. They never say anything positive. I mean, I have to tell you, I'm surprised that you guys stay. But we love our customers, our friends, our coworkers. That's the reason that we stay, really. I just think, like, you have to open your mind a little bit to the new generation, and yeah. I'm constantly talking to friends. I'm constantly social networking, so we're always trying to be innovative and creative. I think Nicole's a manager without the title. It sounds like it. Well, let's talk about the managers. Tell me about Ken. In my opinion, they're nothing more than babysitters. They don't have any power to do anything. When's the last time John or Larry did something to express appreciation to all of you? Christmas, but we had to bring everything. I mean, <laughs> I'm sorry? We had a Christmas potluck. That was Christmas potluck. It was a party for us, but we had to bring I'm sorry. We had to pay for our drinks. Pay for our drinks. <laughs> I'm in like a gay hell. I'm in like the gay vortex, and I actually kind of want to get out. <laughs> it's the only time I've wanted to be straight. Take me with you. Take me with you. I'm going to send John and Larry a big gay lump of coal for Christmas. That isn't how you show appreciation to your staff. Well, I have big plans for this afternoon because we're going on a field trip. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm taking you to my favourite bar. I'm taking John, Larry and the staff to the Abbey, one of the best gay bars in LA. It's everything that Ripple should be in Long Beach. I want to introduce you to David Cooley, founder and owner of the Abbey. The Abbey is celebrating its 21st year. We're known for our great signature drinks, and we see about 1.2 million people through our gates annually. I want David and his staff to assess how you guys are doing and help you to be better. I think the Abbey is a pretty incredible establishment. The drinks are great, the atmosphere is one of the best. Ripples isn't even like the ugly stepchild compared to the Abbey. I want to introduce you to Armando, who was the head bartender here. Hello. He has been bartending for 10 years? 10 years, yes. And what do you serve your cocktails in? We serve them in martini glasses. So no plastic cups? No plastic cups, definitely, yes. <laughs> so much better if you have beautiful glassware, you know? What drink would be a good drink to assess the bartender's skills? Well, I think uh, if you can make a great margarita, you can tell how good you are. Amanda, here's what I think you should do. Have each of our bartenders make a margarita, and then you can taste test it. Oh, love and, it. And uh, maybe I'll come back and taste yeah, it as well. Out, yeah. <laughs> so please, come back. Hey, you're perfect. Well done. We're going to go taste that, OK? It's really good, a little bit sweet. Too much triple sec, actually. Okay. Wee Actually, very good. Oh, thank you. Overall, <laughs> what do you think? They were very quick in making them, which was good, because you can deal with a lot of volume. Uh, just little things like don't squish the lime in there. And, and if you have a chance, please uh, shake the margarita. But all, all the while, you know, great job. I invited David to give John and Larry a tour so that he could give them some advice. If someone comes up and asks for a glass of water, do you give it to them? You just give them a glass of water. If they want bottled water, you know, then that's it sells. But of course, if they want water. You can see the look on Larry's face. Why? What am I missing here? I don't believe in giving away water, tap water. How's your reaction when, you're, when a customer asks for a glass of water? Sometimes there's problems. I charge three fifty for water. We're not a coffee house. We want to sell drinks. Could they take a drink on your dance floor? Absolutely. We encourage them to stand up on the booth and dance. And I have another question. Sure. Someone comes in with a handbag and they sit it on the bar. OK. What's the question? What are you going to do to me? Ho hopefully I serve you a drink and make you feel welcome. I want the bar to look nice. I don't want it to look like a coat room with a big purse or a coat. Maybe I'm wrong. Well. David didn't like my rules about purses and sweaters on the bar. And I was shocked because I've been doing it for 37 years. And tell me about a cover charge. Never in 21 years have I ever charged a cover. And how many employees do you actually have working for We have about now? 215 now. Wow. You know, it's really important that I, I take the time and they know that I appreciate their hard work. How do you show your staff appreciation? Well, our Christmas party, of course, is to look forward to every year. Happened I heard that you had there. a potluck for Christmas. I knew you were going to bring that up. Well, come on. <laughs> I know. I would take them somewhere else to show their thanks. It goes a long way. Noted. John and Larry started out resistant to David, but now I'm hoping they'll take what he said to heart. How was your day? Really cool. Fun. Yeah. How did our bartenders do? 
I think they did well. I think they need to be uh, maybe more detailed. Make sure you know your recipes well, and then... Um... So you guys need to even out your pores. Is that one of the issues, Yes, Amanda? even our pores. So would you recommend that Ripples has a signature drink? Absolutely. Be famous for something, you know. Be famous for, oh, let's go to Ripples because they have amazing mojitos. Armando taught us so many cool things. I definitely cannot wait to make some of these drinks at Ripples. It seems like you have a great staff. Stop having so many rules and regulations. It's a bar. You can't stop people from having a good time. Otherwise, they won't come in. The staff are clearly excited about getting this business back on track. I just hope John and Larry can break out of their old ways and embrace the change. Coming up, this place is redunculous. Do you want me to keep <clears throat> reading? No. No? <laughs> no. <laughs> John and Larry's crazy rules are driving customers away and taking money out of their own pockets. I need to get them to realise this if they're going to save this business. I actually took the liberty of doing some online research and it isn't hard to find reviews on this place. I'm not that computer savvy. And let's face it, John and I are a little older. We've really never gotten that far into it. So we really don't know what people are saying in the online reviews. Do you guys have any idea what the customers are saying about this place? Not really. I used to love going to Ripples, but it hasn't been fun for a long time. Don't get thirsty. They don't give you water unless you buy it. And don't even think to put one toe on the dance floor with a drink in hand. You will be kicked out. Really? This is pretty lame. They serve liquor in plastic cups. <laughs> this place is redunculous. There is a cover charge most nights. I don't understand why I have to pay to enter a bar. Paying a cover means that the owner is greedy. That's not a good thing to be known as. No, it isn't. Do you want me to keep <clears throat> reading? No. No? <laughs> no. I didn't know it was that bad. This is like John and my baby here. It, it kind of hurt. You have to listen to what people are saying because these comments are invaluable. John, you're very, very stressed out and it's clear how stressed out you are. Yes. The decisions that you two are making because of the financial stress that you're under? Causing more stress. You know what, it's penny wise and pound foolish. Right. You're implementing policies in here based on your financial stress instead of good business. And what you're implementing, it isn't working. And it's gotta be fixed. I did not realize how bad some of those online reviews were. Now we need to change things for the better. Times have changed. In 1974, when this was the first gay dance club, they had nowhere else to go. So you could charge a cover. You could overcharge for a drink. Right. That's not how it works anymore. And you know what? That's a good thing. Mm -hmm. It's a good thing for our community. It is. It is. And it's a great thing, actually, that you have competition because it means that we're not in the ghetto anymore. Mm-hmm. That's true. Yeah? Yes. But it also means that you guys have to be competitive. Right. And you've been stuck in your ways. You have to change and you have to work harder at being better in your own place. Smarter. I want to be number one again. I want people to feel comfortable and have a good experience here. That's a legacy I want to leave. Now that John and Larry realize they need to change the way they're managing their business, I want them to show their staff some true appreciation. You know what? A bar should be fun. And you guys need to have fun as a team because it's obviously something you haven't done for a while. So I brought you here for the first annual Club Ripples staff retreat. Oh, I love it. I love it. Why don't you guys tell the staff some of the things that you have come to realize? We need to change this business. I know I have to be more communicative with you guys. And believe me, I love you all. You know that. And it is going to work. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. And that's the most passionate I've actually heard you yeah. since I've been here, John. Well, thank you. Are you crying, Mikey? A little bit. <laughs> it feels really good to hear that. There's a light at the end of the tunnel, like we see it. So, John, you are going to have to buy your staff some day passes. 
<laughs> because, John, you're paying. Oh. <laughs> and for, uh, and you two, I'm going to make you guys have fun. OK. Whether you like it or not. 13 tickets, please. 13? OK, okay guys. Here's somewhere. Thank you. It was apparent to me yesterday that the staff are really frustrated. So I thought bumper cars would be a great way to get some of their aggression out. On your mark, get set, go. Oh. <laughs> I'm getting you <laughs> Turn the wheel, turn the wheel. I couldn't go on those bumper cars because I've had that quintuple bypass. I'm not supposed to get worked up. <laughs> But I really enjoyed watching Johnny just laughing his butt off. I've definitely had some pent up aggression and tension that he needed to release, and I went for John a couple times. John got really into the bumper cars. I think he got a lot of his aggression out. John showed his inner kid. In the next month, we're going to the spa casino to gamble. Really? Today, Club Ripples became a team. Did you guys have fun? Yes. 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 Good. That's what today was about. We'll be coming and having more fun. If I don't smile, slap me. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> I have something to put another smile on your face. Are you ready? Ready. Come on. I've actually been really curious about one thing all week. You told me that you didn't have the key to that suggestion box. Well, I'm really curious to see what's in it. I um, think we should take a look inside. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my god. I think we should bust this thing open like a pinata. Do it. Woo! Do it. Ooh. Oh, careful. Suggestions. <laughs> wow. Oh my god. 1994? Stop charging so much cover. Wow. Mm -hmm. Listen to your people. Mixed drinks are served in plastic cups. Wow. I cannot believe how many suggestions were in there that were suggested by Tabitha. We gotta implement these changes right away. Now to the next step of my renovation kickoff. Okay. Bartenders, I want you to whip up your best version of a signature drink. We're going to be your judges, so mix well, mixologists. It's my version of Sex on the Beach. Ooh, sex with a boy. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. I like it. Blueberry raspberry. Brace yourself. <laughs> wow! Looks pretty blue. One of those, and you'll be sleeping in the bar for the next week. Woo! And Adrian, this is yours. Yeah. You could call it a pineapple sunset. Ooh, that tastes like a, a big. <laughs> <laughs> this is yours, Nicole, and it's a peach. Peach martini. Refreshing. It is refreshing. Very good. Yeah? It's time to decide which drink is the uh, signature drink for reopening day. I knew he was going to pick that he likes okay. peach. I do. You're I love picking peach. Nicole's. I do like Nicole's, but I'm not going to pick it. I'm going to pick this one. Wow. Okay, so you're picking Adrian's. Adrian's? I love Adrian. Adrian's my best friend, but Tabitha will pick my drink. I know. Oh, all right. I hate to break hearts, ladies. Oh. I'm going, Adrian. I'm going, Adrian. It was definitely exciting to win today because my drinks are awesome. I made it the way I like it, so that was cool. Here's to almost 40 years of being in business at Club Ripples. The first gay dance club in Long Beach. And here's to a very long and successful Future. Yeah? Here, here, here. So the pineapple sunsets. Thank Cheers, you. everyone.
coming up. Hi, boys. Hi. How's it going? Oh, boy, Larry. Hi, everyone. How are you doing? Good. How do you feel? Excited. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Yeah? Let's go. Come on. Wow. Wow. So, oh my God. What do you think? It looks, it looks great. great. Amazing. Oh my God, I can't believe how great the bar looks. What a change. It's fabulous. This color, it's a lot lighter and it has much more of a beach feel, which I love and it freshens it up. So it does make it look much bigger and it makes it look much brighter. And you have brand new bar stools. People can actually sit here now and not wobble away and this is plenty of glassware to make sure that you guys are always serving drinks and glasses. The fact that Ripples has glassware now, it's a big, big statement. It's nice. And you have the recipe cards here for your pineapple sunset martini, which I've taken the liberty of putting it up here on your drink board so everyone knows that it's the signature Ripples drink. And there will be people dancing with drinks in their hand. What do you think, Larry? I'm going with it. Are you guys ready to go out to your new patio? Yes. yes. All right, let's yes. do it. Come on out, everyone. Love it. Wow. Love it? Wow. Here's the thing. You are on the ocean, and it's right. such an amazing location. Now it's about bringing the ocean in. Yeah. So when people come here, they feel like they're at the beach, having their fabulous pineapple sunset martini and enjoying themselves on a beautiful day. The renovation looks amazing. Our bar looks like a beach bar. It's cool. I love it. And I've taken the liberty of putting up a new sign that says that you are the first established gay dance club in Long Beach. We are. And it's something that should be celebrated. And you guys should remind people of it in positive ways. It's not about being dated, it's about the history behind it. And you know what? People should embrace that instead of feeling like it's old and tired. They should be proud of it because it is part of our community and it's actually a very important part of our community. Why do you look so upset, John, like you're crying? <laughs> He's excited. No, I am excited. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, now you need to do a fabulous job. I will. And so do you, Larry. I will. Yeah, and so do all of you. Today is reopening day, and it's all about getting a good reputation back out in the community and doing a great job. It's all a new right? beginning. It is a new beginning. I know that the customers will see an instant change, and we're going to rock them. Welcome. How are you? How are you? Someone you haven't seen in a while? Yeah. I'm, yes, I haven't seen in a while. John and Larry were really social and welcoming to the customers on reopening day. Their face are going to hurt tonight. <laughs> Those are muscles not used to being used. Because muscles that of the are smile. Not... They need to keep that up to improve this bar's reputation. Have you seen the smile like this yeah, before yeah. on John's face? Once Have you smile, seen... yeah. It was more often a scowl. Let me see that smile again. See, there it is. I like seeing it as well. I'm a changed man because I can see the possibilities of what had been missing with my business, and that was me. Hi, boys. How's it going? Oh, boy, Larry. Not saying a word. Is it driving you crazy from no, the inside? No, because you told me not to let it. So I'm, I'm just going with the flow. Bring your big purses, bring your big coats, dance on the dance floor with your drinks, and have a really good time. I just wanted you to know that this is a pineapple sunset, and this is your dance floor. Oh, I wasn't even paying attention. <laughs> really? Why yeah. right have you changed in such uh, yeah. a short time? You know, so you go ahead, throw it on the floor. I don't care. I'll get somebody to clean it up. Larry really let go of his crazy rules. He's really making an effort today. How is this? Do you it's like good. It's, it's good. really good. Adrian's pineapple sunset was definitely tasty, and I think it'll be a real money maker for the bar. Nice so to meet you. So we understand this is your creation. Yeah, it was off the top of my head the other day, yeah. It's delicious. Good, I'm glad you like it. It's got a kick. Awesome. <laughs>
Thank you for coming. Oh. Nicole did a really good job today. She's an incredible asset to Ripples. So you have fun? Yeah, it's so nice. It's so different now. Got that whole cabana feel into it. It was right over in that area, right over there, that I met my partner five years ago. And he just grabbed me and he kissed me in the rain. Very romantic movie. Wow. And in five months, we're getting married. People find their partners here, their wives, their husbands, you know. They have the best years of their life in places like this, and I certainly do. I met my partner here, the love of my life, yeah. Oh, I love that. My core circle of friends, my community is based here, you know. Yeah. That's why this place is so important. Hey, hey, welcome. Carlos, Ken. Nice to meet you. How is everything? Things are going great. Yeah. Bartenders are pouring. Um, they're marking, they're comping. They're doing a good job. They're doing a great job. Ken really stepped up on reopening day. He made sure customers were taken care of and he was a really active manager. John, I actually invited Laura and Mike in here today from the Long Beach Community <laughs> Business so Network. Were. I think John's ready to really re-engage with the community and get the bar's name out there. So I invited in a local gay business organisation to talk to John and Larry about getting involved. It's good for the community and it's good for your business. Right. It would be our pleasure, it really would, to have you in the fold. You know, my doors are open here. Anytime we want to do something, oh, that would be we fun. can. We you could do a fundraiser, fundraiser here. Too, yes. Oh, you know, that would just way. be, that would be it was so wonderful. I'm thinking you could charge a door cover. <laughs> oh. Uh, it's going to make you happy, John. I have to be out there and show the people in our community that I want to work for the betterment of all of us. So while everyone's cleaning up and finishing up, maybe we can sit down for my final recommendations. OK. You ready? I'm ready. How do you think the day went? Good. I think it went well. Everybody was so upbeat and working well together. Has it been a while since you've had that feeling? Yes. Yes, it has. A long time. Both of you seemed really happy to be here and really happy to interact with people. Felt good. It felt great. But it's something that you do have to keep showing everyone. Because let me tell you, the number one thing that people commented on was your smile. So clearly, they don't see it very often. And they were missing it. I'll be there. My first recommendation is that you don't manage by watching monitors. No, you have to be hands-on. And, John, you can't stay in your office. Right. People have to see you. They have to feel like you two want to be here, so they want to be here. I know it's important for the business. And no more calling the bar, yelling at your staff about crazy rules. I think I get more stressed, up, stressed out by doing that, whereas if I was here, I could handle it easier. And look, it's not about not having rules. You need to watch your staff and you need to make sure that they're doing their job. But it's also about giving them praise and telling them, you know what, you're doing a good job. Right. Absolutely. It doesn't stop here. And that actually sounds like you're ready to come into the 21st century. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And that's actually my next recommendation. You need to tap into the younger generation and find out what they want and give it to them. Right. Do you think Nicole would be a good manager? Coming up. Before I leave, though, there's something that I know you've been waiting for for a really, really, really long time. What happens if, say, Larry and John revert back to their old ways? I'll call Tabitha. I'll definitely call Tabitha and, and get her back in there to, to, to pull out the bat. <laughs> I got her number, so it's good. No, <laughs> <laughs> everyone's like, oh, what? Oh, God. Did you all I don't think she's your type. You're right. She's I'm not, jealous. She's not my type. You can have her. It's all you. This one's all you. I'll take her. Tabitha is my girlfriend because she's so sexy. She's just so hot. She's powerful. It's amazing. I love you, Tabitha. My first recommendation is that John and Larry not manage by watching video monitors. Yay. That they actually be present. I like that. So no more phone calls. I'll be here. Exactly. And now, why don't you tell Ken what we discussed? We decided that we would like to offer you our general manager's position. <laughs> <laughs>
10, you are a leader. I can't wait to tell everybody that I'm the general manager of Club Ripples and that I'm going to be there to ensure that you have a good time. Nicole, my recommendation was that you become a shift manager. You are the new generation and the new energy that this club needs. really needs. And we know that you have great ideas. Thank you. Being promoted to shift manager is a big deal, and I'm really glad that Tabitha saw something in me. I'm ready. Adrian, you came up with the pineapple sunset, and you have been here for six years. So I have recommended that you become the lead bartender. You know, I think you do great. It means a lot. I'm super stoked. It's the first time in a long time I've ever felt acknowledged by them, so it felt really good. I have one last thing to do. Oh. Look at, look at. John's ready. <laughs> You're gonna miss me, but you better take care of it and empower these people. You guys better not let me down because you never know, I might be back. Good luck. Thank you. Wow, when I walked in this gay bar a week ago, it was a joke. But today the owners set a really different tone. And the staff did a great job. And if they can keep this up, it will be a really successful bar again. But we'll see. It's crazy in here. Hello, hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Oh, look, he went oh, into the house. Oh, you got a hug. Yeah, you look really good. Thank you. I just want to know how everything's going. How is it for you being one of the shift managers? I create a good liaison between the team and the management, so I think it's great. Good. So how is John now when you approach him and give him new ideas? He's intrigued, I would say, because he sees that. And we're pulling people in here. John and Larry are definitely trying to become more open-minded. I think they see that we have great ideas. We're young, we're out in the community, and they're listening. You know, I have not gotten one call from Larry. No armchair management. And if he wants to say something, he comes in and says it. I don't have that micromanaging from the sky. Do you feel like business has improved? I mean, today is it's a it's, great step in the right direction. Yes, things are very good. Uh, everybody's on a positive high. As a matter of fact, there's uh, five ex-employees that I counted in here tonight already. Really? Yeah, there's a camaraderie there. Yeah, I mean, we've had a little bit of it, but now it's really there and you can see it. And I haven't yelled at anybody, not one person. Have I yelled out about a purse, a sweater, <laughs> a drink on the floor? Nothing. Have you stopped charging cover charge? There's no cover. The policy changes have done a lot for the better of our business. I'm noticing more people coming in and uh, it's, it's more fun now. I've gotten involved with LBCBN. Fantastic, the business organization. Do you feel like your reputation is changing here in Long Beach from being Absolutely. Yes, definitely. Bad? It makes me feel great that we are very involved. We want to see that our community thrives. Before I leave though, there's something that I know you've been waiting for for a really, really, really long time. All right. Yeah. No, don't you dare make me up. <laughs> Put me down. Next time on Tabitha Takes Over. Stop running your mouth and listen. They think I'm tough on them, but they're babies. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Stop all this fool We're bougie sometimes, and we're ghetto sometimes. We're bougetta. And my mom just passed away from breast cancer. It. Suck it up. Who's going to pay my electric bill? <gasps> I'm walking into freaking chaos. You're so angry with your staff. Clean this up. Yes, sir. You got to say yes, sir, master. <laughs>